Welcome to our lecture online. So far in this series of videos, we've been using the test statistic to determine if we should reject a null hypothesis or not reject a null hypothesis. But there's an alternate method. That alternate method is called the probability value method, or also called the p-value method. So, what was the original standard method again? Well, we end up calculating the t-statistic, and this is how we do it. We take the difference between the mean of the sample and the mean of the population and divided by the ratio of the standard deviation of the population with the square root of the sample size. And then we get a value for the test statistic and if it's less than the z-score that means the test statistic falls to the left of the critical region then we end up failing to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so then we have the alternate method. The alternate method we use to recalculate the p-value. Now, what is the p-value? Well, we'll get into that in just a moment, but we determine that if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis again. Again, if the p-value is greater than, than the level of significance, we end up in the non-critical region, and again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In order to reject the null hypothesis, we have to be in the critical region. Now, the reason why the second method is a good method, there's a benefit to that, is that the p-value has a more intuitive feel, intuitive interpretation of what's going on. Notice that if the number, if the p-value is greater than alpha, it gives you a, a larger percentage. A larger percentage means that you're going to be here rather than there. To the right means smaller percentage, to the left means larger percentage. And so that's how you can kind of get a much better feel for the intuitive feel for once you calculate the p-value, where in relation to the boundary of the critical region you are, because that's set relative to the level of significance. So, let me show you how that's calculated. So, let's say we have sample size of 1, 2, and 9. In each case, the mean of the sample is going to be 105, so we're using the same numbers as before. Notice that the mean of the population is 100, standard deviation is 5. We first calculate the t-statistic. Same thing again, we take the mean of the sample and the mean of the population. We take the difference between those two, divide by the standard deviation. In this case, I would do 5 divided by 5, which is 1, and we multiply times the square root of 1. So we get a 1. We get a test statistic equal to 1. How do we calculate the p-value? Well, we go back to our table. We look at 1.0. And 1.0 equates to a 0.34134. Boy, my eyes are getting bad. All right, there we go. So when t is equal to 1, that corresponds to a value of 0 0.34134. And then if we subtract that from, 50, from 0.5, so then we take 0 0.5, which represents have the normal distribution, and we subtract this number from that, 0 0.34134, well, we get approximately equal to how about 16%, because 50% minus 34% gives us 16%. And then notice that 16%, the p-value, which is on 16%, is indeed greater than the level of significance, which was 5%, and so therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't reject it. All right, so now let's say that we go over here when it is equal to 2, and we get a t-value of 1.414. The only reason we get a larger t-value is because we multiply times the square root of a larger sample size, a sample size of 2. So now we get t equals 1.414, which when we take a look in our table, one, four point, uh, we get 1.414, which is about, uh, let's say it's about 0 0.421, 0 0.421. And so what we do then is we take half, 0 0.5, which is half the right side of the normal distribution, subtract from that what we got from the table, 0 0.421, and that gives us approximately 7.9%, just slightly less than 8%, 0 0.5, that's 50%, minus 42.1%, is 7.9%, 0 
But again, notice that 7.9% is greater than the level of significance, which is 5%. So again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So on our third attempt, we now have a sample of 9. So the t value now is going to be the difference between the mean of the sample and the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation times the square root of the sample size, which is 9, and the square root of the sample size, uh, the square root of that is 3, 3 times 1 is 3, so our p-value now is 3. So I go to my table, I look for my p-value, um, I look for the value from the table, for 3 that would be equal to 49865, so when this is equal to 3, then I get a table value of 0 0.49865, 49865, and then we're going to subtract that from 0.5, which again represents half the distribution. Let me write this as a 5 here, minus 0 0.49865, which is equal to 0.135%. So notice now my p-value is a very tiny number. And notice that the p-value no longer is greater than alpha. It's now smaller than my level of significance. And so therefore, I will reject the null hypothesis because with a t-value of 3 gives me a what we call a probability value that is really small compared to the level of significance, which pushes us into that critical region. And therefore, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So fail to reject, fail to reject, reject because we're comparing this number, the probability value, with the level of significance. And so the reason why this method is somewhat popular is because it gives you a better intuitive feeling where you're comparing a number, in this case the probability value, with the level of significance and, um, yes, the probability value. And so therefore, if it's smaller than the level of significance, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And that is how it's done.